It's Saturday night at the Speedway, and the promise of carnage is in the minds of the fans and drivers alike. This invasion has moved in full force with the superstars of Monster Trucks ready to blast the track in the Old Line State. The Monster Truck Invasion continues for 2023 here at the Hagerstown Speedway on the outskirts of Hagerstown, Maryland. This legendary clay oval playing host to this event once again this year. Night number two about to get underway here. Last night, Overkill Evolution was your racing and best trick champion. Mikey Vodders picking up two competition victories. Went for that freestyle victory. He was strong, but the guy who outran him was another Maryland campaigner by way of Spokane, Washington, Preston Perez. Getting wild and toxic, the old PEI standby coming on strong on night number one Friday night here at the Hagerstown Speedway. We're gonna get to monster truck action again in just a moment, but right now we're gonna start off tonight just like we did last night with our highlights from our Street Warriors qualifying. Michael Shaw, who qualified third coming into the racing bracket, which will be taking uh, place in just a little bit. They'll go on a Chicago-style course with the Street Warriors. He ran a 27-15. Jacob Beckner in the 2015 Subaru Cross Track came out, ended up in 11th place as he beat and banged his way to the finish line, tearing off a little plastic in route. And you can see they have uh, actually changed. If you saw our coverage from last time, they changed that whoop section because it was just tearing equipment up. You can see they're still tearing a little bit of equipment up here tonight. Mike Murray, unfortunately, with DNF and qualifying. The truck is not out, though. This uh, little 96 Jeep Cherokee will be back in action, but he uh, is currently sitting at the bottom of the pack. Chris Wolf, your runner-up from last night, who we didn't think we'd see back. He took the truck home to Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, got it repaired, came out today, and qualified in the number four spot with a 27-43. Then it was Chris Horkner out of Hagerstown, Maryland, right here at home, the big Ford short bed banging on here on the clay oval and this was a truck i was very excited to see make a run even if it only got one out of it you could feel every hit every time he came over that finish line ramp with all of that weight in that big ford f-150 nick winfield another guy we didn't think we'd see back ran a 28 78 in the 95 del sol thought he was out of competition after really torturing this thing yesterday, and you can see he's right back at it today. Winfield would run in the number seven spot at a 28-78. Still landed on that nose. Those hard stops do not feel good in the cockpit. Samuel Kemp, back after a DNF yesterday, he would run in ninth position at a 29-92. Looking good out of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Came a long way to race hard with the Street Warriors here at the legendary Speedway in Hagerstown. Right behind him, Dana Ma, another member of the Wolf Motorsports team, again, carrying the colors for us this weekend. We appreciate that. She ends up in 12th position at a 34-35, but very capable of getting in the upper crust. Your number one qualifier, Brad Kovacs out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, and this guy has got a background in tough truck racing. He's got himself an awesome mega truck driving Clifford here this weekend. The uh, 95 CJ got around there quick at a 24-13. Very impressive. Cannot wait to see what he has for these guys when we get into elimination racing in just a little bit. Dustin Miller, another little S10 Blazer. This one out of Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Runs in the number six spot with a 28.70. He should be pretty fast tonight now that he's got the course down. Interesting to see though, he actually should end up matching up against the other S10 Blazer in competition. Josh Myers, who won the whole thing last night over Chris Wolf in the finals. Not only did he survive his way through this track, but he ran it harder than anyone else right there. You see, though, he had a little bobble, and it would hurt his time. He would end up in fifth, though, even with that bobble at a 28.55. Josh Mon, 
another member of the Wolf Motorsports family, 25-68 for him. He would end up in second place running much, much harder and the track seems much more agreeable to him. Right behind him, Nathan Metz ends up in the number 10 spot of the 31-20, the Frame Rail Freaks racing entry. And these are some guys that we have seen upside down here in the past. In fact, there's a reason they're running roll cages this year. He ends up, as I said, in the number 10 spot. And finally, wrapping up the qualifying session, Shannon Blank at a 28.88, ends up in eighth position. Running it hard, another Frame Rail Freaks entry. Looking good out here in Hagerstown. So, that's the Street Warriors getting set up for racing. We have monster truck racing coming your way. We have a great crowd on hand, and we will be right back to the Hagerstown Speedway. Stay with us. This Back Channel Productions program is brought to you in part by Monsters Monthly. Stay up to date with photos, videos, event info, and more at MonstersMonthly.com. And by Crush This. For an inside look at the monster truck phenomenon, check out Crush This, a monster truck podcast. There's only one place in the world you can find this much old school cool. Freedom Racing Monster Trucks. The home of Cyclops and Unnamed and Untamed. Get yourself a limited edition toy at FreedomRacingMT.com. Saturday night. Good weather too as we uh, have no rain in the forecast this weekend. As many know last year we got rained out on Saturday. We only had two shows in the books this year. It looks like we're going to get all three in and the crowd is chomping at the bit for some awesome monster truck racing. Again, if you didn't see our coverage last time, they've changed the track here. Normally, this is like a 65 70 mile an hour finish side by side on either side of that rail. This year it's a reverse Chicago style with a roller and a uh, kick ramp in both lanes. You're going to make a right-hand turn up and over the guardrail. One will come up onto the front stretch, so they're going to have to go into a camper. The other one has to go down onto that infield lane, and the disadvantage there would be turning into that gravel. And they've also made an alteration to the course. They've moved one of the K rails down by the scale house so these guys don't get into it, as Jim Kohler did yesterday during the final round race with Overkill Evolution. His first round back against Gary Snyder, the Illuminator, and Mr. Excitement, Jim Kohler, and Snyder is going after him. And Jim Kohler gets past the ramp, he slides on the wet dirt where they watered the track. Snyder gonna have to hang on to try to take this victory though. It's not over until it's over. Right there, still going out wide, but he collects it quickly and he'll come back for the victory. Jim Kohler still having problems. Keeping it together on the track, getting out of shape, but we will wait and see if he does come back because this is really a battle of attrition. You gotta survive your way through these nights. Here's a guy we weren't sure we were even gonna see back today, even though he is the local hero, he's the promoter. He's got a lot of eggs in the basket here in Hagerstown as uh, last night he pretty well destroyed the front end. We're going to show you what happened as he lines up against Ryan Disharoon here in round one. But watch this. He's going to come over on the front end off the bus jump. Hits hard and then we see a shower of sparks start coming out from underneath of this vehicle. Broken pinion, broken third member and completely completely destroyed the housing, broke the welds all over this thing. Hurt the corners on both sides, really, really did a lot of damage to that right front, which they had been dealing with all weekend long already. So they've uh, freshened up a few parts. They've got a whole new front housing underneath of this truck. They had to put a new center section in it. They've had to do repairs on the spindles and the knuckles. It should be good to go here today. But if anybody has caught the hometown curse, it's got to be Michael Botter Sr. as he stages against one of the best second generation drivers in the business, Ryan Disharoon, the metal shop owner, the designer of these trucks, in the shaker. Pretty even off the start, maybe a little edge to the shaker. Botters, little trouble getting woed down there. 
not his run right now, although he didn't give up too much ground considering, but Shaker is on rails at this moment. Washes out just a little bit, coming back for the finish line, but he will pick up that victory, and Mike Potter Sr. will head on back to the pits in Black Stallion. Great run for Disharoon as he heads back into the hot pits. Driver's kind of getting the hang of this course here tonight. He's got some good racing on tap. You see Preston Perez brake check just a little bit coming out, trying to see how slick that area is. That's where he will have to make his first right-hand turn as he takes on Joe Foley. Two of the new gen drivers out here on the circuit. Don't think these guys don't have some years behind them. Perez has driven many, many trucks, well over 20-some trucks. And uh, he's had his fair share of wild moments, certainly in this field, but you can't tell by the body panels. Joe Foley right there with him right now, just a cab on the old fire truck here tonight. Hearing the colors for the firefighters of the U.S. Look at this, Perez getting in trouble on top of the jump, but so does Foley, and the truck doesn't even turn. He goes straight over the wall and on to the front stretch, and this is gonna be all Preston Perez provided he makes a legal pass. Which it looks like he will do. Perez moving on into the second round of competition. We'll get another look at it. Both of them had trouble. Watch Perez. Remember, he brake checked coming in here. Tried to set up the turn early, and he actually got too close to the guardrail there. Didn't want to overshoot and drive across the top of the ramp and end up coming toward our camera here on the guardrail. Now, here's what happened to Foley. Did not see this. Watch how hard he gets in this rail. Bang! Right there. Hits the back of that guardrail. And that's something we saw a couple guys do yesterday. And man, it really threw him. Once he hit it and it threw the truck over in the wrong direction. He didn't even bother correcting. He just uh, went ahead and took it back to the pits. And look at this. Problems continue for the hometown hero. Man of the hour right now. Waiting to see if he can get his truck back out here for uh, best trick because he's not coming back for racing. Chris DeHoyas now is another guy who hit the rail yesterday, but he was very impressive. Big surprise to Preston Perez when he ran him yesterday in round one. He takes on teammate Steven Thompson in the legendary Taurus. Eddie Micah truck. The build for Taurus going up against the truck. I don't even want to list the amount of builders that thing's got, but Mike Bonners took it, made it work for him. And DeHoyas has got a little lead again. Can he make this work for him? The bus likes to track. It looked like Thompson just ran over the guardrail. Wow, who won that one? They were right there together on the finish line. DeHoyas surprising some of these veterans here this weekend. Chris taking over the wheel of this truck at the uh, conclusion of about, I don't know, about a season ago. Kind of getting his bearings in this thing. He's been doing good here this week, and this track might suit him. Look at this. Thompson did get on the rail. Not too bad, but uh, kind of threw the rear end around, and he ended up going real deep in the turn. Left a dent at the top of that thing and tipped over one of the timbers. Look how close they were on the finish. Still waiting to see who they are going to call the winner of that one. They're reviewing it from the booth right now, and it looks like Stephen Thompson just eked out a win as last night's racing champion comes out for the start of round two. So we had two trucks that will seed into this bracket automatically. It'll make it an eight truck bracket all the way down. He goes up against round one winner, Ryan Disharoon in the shaker. Good start for both trucks. Fodder is in the lead right now. Perfect corner for him. He's been doing that, but look at Disharoon coming after him. A little bit behind still, though, about a truck length. Can he make up the distance? Fodder is taking a big chance right there. Still manages to keep it about a truck length in front of Ryan Disharoon for the hard charge across the finish line. We're gonna look at this again. Watch Disharoon on this final charge to the finish. 
really having to push it there. And Vonders, again, trick turn. Could have gotten himself in trouble, but he's been pushing it harder and harder, closer and closer to that edge. I don't think he has much more to play with right now as we get the dry hop from Rick Disharoon, the legend in smoking out of Del Mar, Maryland. Proud to be from Maryland Heritage. He and the Metal Shop crew, Ryan Disharoon, his son, down there in uh, Del Mar, Delaware. As I mentioned last time on the coverage, the border town there between the uh, Maryland and Delaware border, and they sit right there on the border. But uh, Rick does want everybody to know he is originally from Del Mar, Maryland, sitting across from a truck that came out of his very shop, the original Metal Shop Signature Series machine. This is the Illuminator, Corey Snyder. Second generation driver, his father up on the roof with us tonight, watching the action. Snyder getting out of the hole quick, both of them running 557 cube against Chevrolet. Very evenly matched truck, but Disharoon having trouble with the first full turn as he got on the guardrail. Snyder making his final lunge to the finish. He will pick up a big victory, and Disharoon didn't even get around the turn yet. He went way deep down there. Not sure what happened to him. Looked like he drove a little too far through that final turn. You can see there's a lot of uh, dust up on the sidewalls there on the edge of the tread. Might get another look at it here in a second, but uh, Snyder moving on in action right now in front of a capacity crowd here at the Hagerstown Speedway as they get ready to reset the bracket for our uh, semi-final round of racing and when we come back the street warriors will come back to the front stretch stay with us more action to come from here at hagerstown speedway Looking good, both of them right now, but Mini definitely gonna take the lead early on. And Chris Wolf's gonna have uh, kind of easy pickings here. This truck really was built for this type of racing. You can see how well it works. The Wolf Motorsports XJ rolling on into the next round. That's Beckner throwing a few more plastic parts, a little bit of rubber out from underneath of that old Subaru. Is Michael Shaw rolls into the turn four starting line. On the other side of the track, Dana Mond, another member of the Wolf Motorsports clan. Carrying the BCP colors tonight for us. Pair of Grand Cherokees going at it. 
Both of them strong off the starting line. Shaw getting beaten around in there a little bit. Mond looking nice and smooth at the moment, but Shaw is on the move. Little bit of a lead for Michael Shaw. Can he stretch it out? Who can get to the final jump first? It will be Shaw launching it over the finish line hard. Taking a chance on breaking some equipment, but he's giving the fans a show here tonight as he knocks out Dana Mon here in uh, round one. Here comes uh, last night's winner, the Trash Panda. It's Josh Myers taking on Nathan Metz, the Grand Cherokee going over. Look how hard Myers is pushing the black and orange Jeep, and he has got problems. That was all she wrote. Pushed it a little bit too hard that time, and he may not have needed to. Nothing against Metz. But I have to think that XJ had a little advantage there, both in weight and function. Just the build of it probably would have fared pretty well, but he pitched it hard over on the nose. And he's going to get towed off right now. We see fluid pouring out of it, and I believe he may have broken a drive shaft. But uh, he's definitely broken something loose underneath of that thing. I believe that Jeep used to be green, if I can tell by the <laughs> piece of trim hanging off right there as they get our next pair stage. Samuel Kemp and Dustin Miller. I said the two S10 Blazers would be coming back to face each other in this uh, first round of competition. Kemp in the 1985 S10 Blazer and Dustin Miller in the 93, the orange S10 Blazer. Who will win the Battle of the Blazers? Miller with a lead right now over Kemp as Kemp takes a hard hit there after the first uh, full straightaway. Look at this! Miller absolutely launches it and just keeps going straight. All right, I don't know if he didn't know he had one more turn or if he broke something or what, but this is going to go to Samuel Kemp who was struggling. Still coming down hard on the front end. He will pick up a victory over Dustin Miller, who had a great run going, but did not finish the course. And I don't know, was it rain fade, or were those their parts failure now? Talk about parts failure, here comes Mike Murray Jr. A, uh, a guy who, uh, boy, could just use a little luck here tonight. He is working his tail off to keep this Green Castle based silver Jeep in the running here tonight as he goes up against Josh Mon, maybe the toughest competitor he could have in the first round because Mon ran second in qualifying. Murray, though, well capable of taking him out. He knows the competition. Boy, they are right there together. Murray getting to the final turn quick. Going a little deep. Can he hang on to it? And Murray picks up about a truck and a half length victory over Josh Mon here in round one. So that will send us into round two with uh, Brad Kovacs taking on Shannon Blank, Chris Wolf taking on Michael Shaw, and Nathan Metz going up against Chris Horkner. Michael Murray may get a high run if we don't get another fast loser in there because we had a lot of damage in this round in spite of the track. Now we're back to monster truck racing. There you saw Preston Perez staging up as he goes to take on Mikey Botters the second overkill evolution. If there is anyone here tonight that Mikey Botters wants to take down, it's Preston Perez. They used to be teammates, and Preston put a hurt on some of Mike Sr.'s equipment. Right now, Botters is in the lead, commandingly so. Perez is going to have to be perfect on this final leg to have any hope. Going in there solid, but Mikey Botters was perfect. As he comes down the final straight, Preston Perez will go to the pits. Mikey Botters moving on toward another championship as our next pair gets ready to come out. Watch this final turn for Perez. He went in here so hard, trying to run like Botters was. And right there, he gets in the gravel and water mixture down there, and it just pushes him wide. Bonner's advantage this weekend has got to be running that open front end. A lot of people say you, you can't get it done with an open front end. Right there, you're seeing what he's able to do. Perez runs a locker in the front and rear. Vonner's only running a locker in the rear. The open front end allows him to pivot around that inside tire and pivot quickly as uh, 
Right now staging up will be Corey Snyder and Stephen Thompson, two friends from uh, childhood right now going at each other in this round. The Eddie Micah truck on the uh, turn four side on the inside lane. The top side, the metal shop build. The Illuminator, Taurus and Illuminator here for the semi. Good start for both of these guys. Thompson pushing to the end. He gets on the rail hard that time. Snyder with a big lead coming back for the final turn. Can he hang on to it? This is the make or break section. Snyder, he's out of the way. Snyder gets there first, but he will be disqualified as he turned off the wall. He came into the final straight inside, too far inside. And when he went to correct, the truck just stayed on a straight, narrow course. He went right over the tough truck obstacles instead of the monster truck obstacles. Right here, you're going to see it turn too far inside. Wanted to hang on to the lead. I'm not sure he could actually see where he was at that point. The sun is in your eyes when you make that corner. But Snyder is out of racing for the night. So it will be teammates Mikey Vodders and Stephen Thompson going at it here for race two of the weekend. As we continue on action in the summer heat. Stay with us. We'll be back. Hey, welcome to Wild Man Adventures. For the Silver Lake Sand Dragway. There really wasn't any off-roading back then. It was all off-road. We're on our way to Lima, Ohio. The wooden wheels. Oh, it's slippery. It's all good on it. Hey, we're here with Rich Cummins. Hey, we're here with Mike Potter. Hey, we're here with Al Pizzo. We gotta check it out. This week we're going to go down memory lane. The monster truck invasion continues here in Hagerstown, Maryland as the uh, great crowd here tonight gets to witness all the action. Here in 2023, including the Street Warriors as they get ready for round two. We've already had a couple of uh, drivers advance into the semifinal round. Michael Murray and Brad Kovacs both due to their opponent not making the call. So we'll only have two pairings here in round two. We'll actually witness Michael Shaw who is laid out of the block right there, handing a big lead to Chris Wolf who is on rails right now, maybe a little oversteer in the first turn, but even in legals, Michael Shaw is just putting on a show over there in that uh, Grand Cherokee. Chris Wolf, though, going on toward another semifinal round. You do want to finish your runs, though, as uh, Michael Shaw did because if somebody breaks, you might have a shot at coming back now as uh, Chris Ortner from right here in Hagerstown wants to see if he can get into that semifinal round as he will uh, have a shot at Michael Murray if he can do that, but he's got to try to knock down a strong run at Nathan Metz, although they're about even right now, maybe a little lead to Metz as Chris gets bounced around in the uh, Ford short bend. Again, every time that thing hits, you can feel it all the way up here as it hits a ton. And that might have been the end of the road for him right there. The front end starting to come back into the wheel wells. Indication that he has bent some suspension parts. Nathan Metz will roll on into the next round. He will take on Michael Murray. And we're going to bring Chris Wolf right back around to the starting line. Brad Kovacs is already there. Wolf is headed that way now quickly to get this semifinal round underway as they come right back at it. This is the semifinals of Street Warriors. The fastest qualifier who's been getting some gifts here tonight will take his first competitive shot at one of the fastest guys in the field from the Northeast. A little North-South Civil War and it's not gonna happen. Something goes away on Clifford. Kovacs hitting dead in the water. Right there by the uh, safety clean banners down on the infield. Chris Wolf bouncing his way on to a final round berth. He will either face Michael Murray or Nathan Metz as Brad Kovacs 
real enthusiastic guy, and I'll tell you what, it's probably the uh, probably the saddest guy in the place right now as <laughs> he came here to play and play hard. Michael Murray, by the way, having his own problems down there. They're checking in on him. He cannot get the truck fired, so will Murray be out of it? There's another guy who's been having mechanical problems all weekend long. There we see smoke coming out of the pipe. He's headed for that starting line. He's ready to go. If he can keep the truck running, he may have a shot at Nathan Metz, but Metz has got to be the odds-on favorite right now with the mechanical problems that Michael Murray has been having. Who will face Chris Wolf in the finals? Dead even to the first jump, Nathan Metz. Trying to outpace Murray. He's going to have to go harder. Murray is on rails right now. Metz trying to make it up in the straight section. Little bobble in the final corner for Murray. But it's not going to matter. Keeps the speed on and he will go to a final round race with Chris Wolf. So the pair of XJs will do battle in the final round as we get ready for our uh, Monster Truck Championship round. And there you see the drivers talking down there. Corey Snyder telling Mr. Excitement about the mistake he made coming up onto the front stretch. They're all talking about it because every one of the guys that's back there right now has made the same mistake, including the gentleman driving Taurus, the only driver who has not made that error tonight and overjumped one of these uh, sections or underdriven one of these sections has been the man in Overkill Evolution. Mike Botters, the second. Mikey has been nearly perfect on this track all weekend long, and he has gotten faster and faster every lap that he has made. And he's once again in the championship race, second straight. Can he pick up two victories in a row, both Friday and Saturday night, now against his teammate, Stephen Thompson in Taurus. Working the first turn beautifully again. Thompson was on the rail. Mikey pushing it toward the final corner. Thompson trying to get there. Again, Fodder is taking that risk, but it pays off for him. And look at Stephen Thompson trying to drive it to the end. You can see him there in the background. Mikey Fodders got into the tough truck obstacles there. Went for a wild ride to give the fans some big hang time. Celebratory, a uh, little extra freestyle here as he slides to a stop in front of the grandstands. Mikey Vodders, a very happy camper after the run he had here last year. A victory has got to feel good every time he can get one. As, uh, we're gonna go back and look at Stephen Thompson's run in Taurus because he had a few wild moments on this one trying to catch Mikey Vodders right here. He actually got into that turn early and pitched himself up and over and onto the far side of that ramp. He hit the, uh, actually hit the inside edge of the ramp, got the nose off there and watch this charge to the finish right here. Getting a little out of shape. He actually landed in the face of the final race ramp. Here is Mikey Vodder's run around the track. And you will see the trick he's been using again. Watch the inside tire. He actually got it to stop and pivot around it. He's not trying to pull. The outside tire will actually pull the truck around the inside tire. When he gets on the brakes like that, he's able to just spin around on that front end and get it around these turns quickly. And that's exactly what Mikey Vodders did to pick up the win here as uh, Chris Wolf heads out of the pits right now in mini. Gonna get ready now for our championship race in the Street Warriors, but Michael Murray again, unable to get his truck to move. They're underneath the front end right now. He has something else going on with it. It won't fire, but that's not the only problem. You see the brake lights are on. We see dust coming out from underneath of it. Daniel Donnelly down there has them on the clock. You can see him standing behind there in the black shirt. He's radioing up to the booth right now, telling them if Murray can't go, I do believe Nathan Metz will get the rebirth into this round. Uh, Metz is sitting there waiting to find out if he indeed will get another shot at it. But right now, Murray trying everything he can to get this truck rolling. You see they've taken the chalk out from under the left rear tire. 
So you have to wonder. All right, the reverse lights come on. It has moved. It was sitting there. He apparently was having some type of problem with the drivetrain. Couldn't get the truck to uh, go into gear. Maybe a transmission issue, but right now, he is on his way off the back stretch and onto the front stretch. So it looks like we will have a race between Michael Murray and Chris Wolf. This should be a good one. Chris Wolf, your runner up from last night, lost to Josh Myers, broke down, coming off the starting line on the lane that Michael Murray is now sitting in. Murray would love to knock down Chris Wolf here. You see he had to go immediately, got to the line, and they took off. Gave him the green, something just came out from under Murray's vehicle as he cuts through that first turn, he tapped the code. That's no big deal, he's behind right now though. Chris Wolf way out in front, and Murray trying to drive him down on his last turn, no! Not even close, a nearly perfect run for Chris Wolf and Mike Murray. If he has no other victories on the weekend, that had to be a personal victory right there because that truck was on its last legs and he managed to pick up runner-up position in a tough, tough lineup of Street Warriors. So, Chris Wolf, last night's runner-up, will pick up the Street Warriors victory on Saturday night at the Hagerstown Speedway. We're not done yet. Best trick highlights and monster truck freestyle coming at you in a moment. Speedway as the sun has set it's twilight time and uh, we're going to take you through the uh, highlights from the best trick competition before we get into freestyle action we'll go back to live action there and you see they watered the track right before best trick keep the dust down as it does get very dusty here in this heat on this gravel and clay surface that they run out here Rick Disharoon starting off the best trick competition not bad there bringing the new moves into his repertoire but uh, as, uh, as if it wasn't dusty enough last night. I said they wanted the track to keep the dust down. Well, Rick wanted to dig the dust out from under the wet surface. All in-house at the metal shop is the uh, chassis and horsepower all there. He put it to work, though. Not going to be enough to get him a win, as you can see. But here's a guy who wanted to raise the bar, Preston Perez and Toxic. The truck shut off as it went into the stoppie. And that is a very scary moment for a driver when they lose power as the truck is tipping onto the nose. He's been there before. Luckily for him, didn't quite have enough over center to take it onto its top. But he also decided it wasn't dusty enough out here. Cyclone time. He was in the spin cycle. Whipping up a tornado on the infield. Raising the bar. The crowd here at the Hagerstown Speedway. There's truck owner Jay Snyder. Up here on the roof with us right now. Watching his equipment go to work. Remember, he's got two trucks in this field now. Chris DeHoyas in the cool bus. The money truck for the Botters camp. A little bit of an underdog when it comes to freestyle and best trick. Not getting quite what he'd hoped for off those two jumps, but strong running truck nonetheless. Mike Botter is back in the action. We wondered if he'd come back and would the front end hold out for him, as you see right there. Going for the two wheel moves. Didn't quite work out the way he had hoped, but he wasn't done just yet to stop this guy from launching into a mini freestyle, but you saw some sparks. Again, right there, still has problems with that right front. 
something going away in this truck, something not right in the front end. They're gonna have to take it back again and work on Corey Snyder and the Illuminator again going for the slack wheel. He's become a trademark for him back when he was driving the uh, PEI truck. He manages to get them in this machine, but there's a lot more weight to push around and it sits a lot lower. It's a lot harder to get it into a slap wheelie. Again, on that gravel, it's hard to get the traction. Got to be up on the clay, but right now, the clay is wet. Mr. Excitement, living up to the name right there as he almost put it on its lid, twisting around on that front end. Does run a locker, so it doesn't matter what corner it gets on, it'll bring itself back down. We had this interesting view of that uh, stoppy. Put the headlights in the gravel. Running wild. His teammate, the truck that Kohler built himself, Axe, Joe Foley, doing what he knows how to do. V cradle, long four link bars. The engine sitting up high and toward the rear axle. Allows that truck to get slap wheelies like no other. Now, this is what put him on his roof last night and this is what ripped all the body panels off tonight. Didn't twist on him. He was able to get it from the stoppy into the moonwalk successfully. Ryan Disharoon, right behind him. Trying his hand at Slap Willies, didn't work for him. But he wasn't done, of course. Some two wheel action from the shaker. Transmission did not want to cooperate with him. It's very hard to shift those trucks quickly into reverse without doing transmission damage. It does not like it when you do that. If you're going into reverse with that side of the transmission dry, it can actually do a lot of damage. But he's able to get it into the moonwalk there, though not quite the way he'd like to. This, though, did not go the way Stephen Thompson was hoping. Went over before he could grab a hold of that Ford momentum and bring the truck back down. Talk about going over center. He went over center in a hurry. Watch it again from this low angle. You see it just, he got on the brakes to try to stand it up and it tripped over. Not the first time we've seen that chassis do that. Run those shocks a little high, but mostly cosmetic damage there. Looks like he may have something going away in the rear shocks that he's gonna have to look at, but not really his concern at the moment. Just wanted to make sure that uh, nothing's bent or broken in that truck. He'll get it back there and take a look at those shots. Mikey Botters trying to pick up where he left off last night. And boy, did he ever. Can pretty much take the truck wherever he wants to on those front tires. One of the best at that move. Now this got very interesting. Keep your eye on the rear end of this truck. As uh, Mikey found himself in the hot seat. Little alcohol fire back there. You can see it extinguishes up toward the driver compartment, but uh, hot fuel, a fuel line came off, got down on that hot brake rotor. And as the uh, track crew extinguishes the flame, the driver in that Nomex driver suit hops out. Mikey Botters picking up another best trick victory and racing victory. He's uh, two for two in both as action continues on here at Hagerstown. We're gonna take a quick break as the fans get some novelties there with the merchandise stand provided by the one and only Jay Snyder. We'll be back in just a moment with Monster Truck Freestyle. Stay with us. The world famous C60 Cyclops. The infamous Dodge Carryall, unnamed and untamed. Get yourself a one-of-a-kind toy, the Mud Bogger Trim Monster Truck at FreedomRacingMT.com. It is freestyle time here at the Hagerstown Speedway. The Monster Truck Invasion continuing on. Crystal Hoyas 
rolling out the higher education cool bus. We're right after a big rocket ramp just outside the pit area. You gotta be careful where you send it on that thing because that building he just went past is a very expensive calibrated scale house. It's where they weigh the stock cars after a uh, hard night of racing here on the uh, Clay Oval in the old line state. Again, one of the legendary dirt tracks here in America. And long played host to monster truck competition all the way back to the TNT Monster Truck Challenge into the uh, Camel Super Series and on into the Monster Wars, later the uh, Monster Jam era. So, major promoters at this track for uh, three decades now. And Fodders Motorsports proud to continue in that tradition, bringing a little bit of a change up to what has traditionally been a straight line track over the years as Chris DeHoyas opens up freestyle. Strong run, get some nice hang time with the cool bus. Remember, Vodders rebuilt this truck in uh, 2022 or at the end of 2021 for the 22 season. It was uh, ran on an older configuration for quite some time. It's been rebuilt a few times actually. It, years and years ago, they changed the cradle out. It used to have a V cradle, it was very similar to the original Maximum Overkill built by Marty Garza and Jerry Richmond. Sort of a rough copy of that truck. Took the V cradle out of it years ago, they put a sheet metal cradle in it, spread that out, distributed the weight a little better, and now this thing can take just about anything you throw at it. It's a very tough truck, but uh, when they put this big bus body on it, they certainly don't want to tear it up too bad. There goes De Hoyas. Looks like he's going to head back to the pits. Thought he was going to go for the bus jump, but he is going to head back to the pits as uh, Rick Disharoon heads straight out onto the front stretch in smoking. The GMC out of Del Mar, Delaware, being driven by the man out of Del Mar, Maryland. And man, what happened there? Hard hit on the front end, locked the tires up. Way throttling over these jumps, really pitching that thing nose down, but it looked like he actually may have bumped the shifter in the air when he landed on the nose on that previous jump. Working his way around here in the uh, Metal Shop GMC Smoke and the Trey Myers painted GMC body. It's beautiful, it's got a lot of little intricate details in it when you get up to it. Nice and close, and a big hit off the bus. Disharoon. It's a guy who probably won't water truck up, but he's not afraid to do so. As uh, had a long history debuting the uh, Backdraft Dodge years and years ago. Ran the uh, Pro MT circuit with it. Later uh, sold it to the Slifco family who uh, had uh, a, a great run in that truck, and Rick taking the hiatus from the monster trucks, made his way back in for his son, Ryan Disharoon, who decided to take his uh, shot at the big beasts, and Rick now back at the wheel after many, many years away. What a shot there, massive hang time for smoking. That's what those metal shop chassis like, they like being sent, that's what they build them to do. They're really built for the, the stadium style monster truck horses. And here, you gotta kind of pick your spots. A lot of low obstacles out here. In an interesting space to work as Rick once again, finding that dry dirt, whipping up a storm on the infield. A run for Disharoon. Working his way around as the dust slowly creeps toward the seats. Disharoon. Make it a little dry up here tonight. It's been humid all weekend. Nice run going. He's got a fire underneath of that. A big fire. Looks like a flash fire again down there off the rear brake rotor. Although that one looked more like an oil fire, maybe a transmission went away. Bright orange flame out from under that truck. That certainly was not alcohol. 
crews run out, check on. There's the engine builders on their way out there. As the metal shop crew goes to see if uh, the big man is all right. We'll take a look. The word we get is that may have been hydraulic fluid. They do have a steering line that appears to have come off there. As they look underneath the truck. An interesting freestyle to say the least. He definitely had some hang time. Kind of took him a bit to get it going. He kind of searched around, but once he found something he liked, he hit it as hard as he could. May have knocked something loose right there. It looked like maybe broke a seal on uh, one of the steering lines in the back. You can see it's smoking right there all of a sudden. May have been a combination of things right there. A lot of uh, flame out from underneath of that truck. I know the transmission was getting a little tired on that run, but I don't think that's what initially caused the fire. They are going to go ahead and uh, tow him off. He apparently does have some engine damage, but we're hearing that is not what caused the fire. The engine damage actually may have come after the truck was pre-fired and taken off the track. There may be a little controversy there. We're going to let that settle out as last night's freestyle winner, Preston Perez, heads down the front stretch with some big hang time. Truck owner Jay Snyder again this weekend watching. He's no longer on the roof though. He was supposed to come out here and just kind of stand back and watch it. Up here with us, he got involved. He's down there on the infield with the guys right now. Perez ready for uh, another shot of the freestyle victory. He knows he's going to have to go some here tonight. With the, the fire on the front stretch already raised the bar for the fans for what they've seen. Remember, this freestyle winner is picked by crowd applause. So, He's got to be strong here tonight. Coming back toward the bus. Straight up and down, and he's in big time trouble over on the nose. Didn't go straight to the cage, fortunately, but the safety crew headed over there immediately. Perez has rolled Toxic over on the infield. And you see there's a difference in the track tonight. Drivers ask for a little more off of that bus jump. They can't really sky it going back toward the pit. So, Mr. Excitement hopped on the loader and dug himself out a step up back there. And man, oh man, is it a step up straight up and down for Perez. What a shot, you see. Set it straight up and he landed on the bus. It looks like the left rear actually bounced off on the one side of the roof. And the right rear smashed down into the bus a little bit. He actually landed kind of in between the dirt and the, the top of the bus. And it bounced him off kind of sideways in there. And might have had a shot to get it into reverse and save it, but uh, I don't know for sure. It's easier to say it from the outside. We can speculate what he could have, should have, would have done, but uh, it's not what he did. And uh, once again, Toxic with some body damage. Again, once it bounces right there, and yeah, it does twist on the top of that bus. When he landed, I think he thought it would tip him forward, but instead, the uh, sheet metal on the top of that bus under the right rear tire collapsed. And over it went there, you see Jay Snyder. Gonna get him backed up, and they're gonna take Toxic on back to the trailer and get a look at it for tomorrow. It's not gonna look so pretty when it comes back out tomorrow, but he turned the crowd on. Probably in the lead right now. It was short and sweet, but he didn't waste the run. He had some big hang time. He didn't make as many moves as I know he'd have liked to, but there was a lot of air in that run, and it ended in a flourish. Left some fiberglass pieces there. See if they'll either put them back on or turn them into merchandise. Here's a guy who did the top-down dance last night. Joe Foley and Axe representing the firefighters of the USA and uh, firefighters all over the world really really holds a special place in this guy's heart but he's here to turn on the crowd and off comes the roof and the door on the other side. Huge air. Gonna work this track for all that truck's got.
obstructions down there on that infield. You have got to be in control of your vehicle when you watch. There's a little, there's plumbing down there. I mean, there's a little bit of everything. And Foley is throwing caution to the wind right now as he slides into the darkness. Right where he is last year is where Mike Vodders took out a picnic table. So uh, hopefully that's the most expensive thing that ever gets broken here at Hagerstown as he takes on the bus and he smashes the roof down on it. Joe Foley and Axe whipping up the dust on the infield, carrying just a ton of momentum right now. See what he's got left for the crowd here. He is using this truck up, hitting everything on this track. There's only maybe one obstacle he hasn't touched yet. Trademark slap wheelies for the Kohler built machine. Debuted in 2008, and look at it, still out here running strong. settle there to avoid wadding up any corner parts or rear end parts but uh, definitely made life hard on this man Steven Thompson in Taurus already been upside down once tonight what does he have for falling going big right off the bat and off comes the left front sheared the spindle and the catch fence doing its job here tonight. Holy cow. Wow, Stephen Thompson. One hit wonder here tonight, not what he wanted at all, and I do believe he had a failure in the rear shocks might have contributed to that little problem right there. Watch it again, he launches hard. Look at the thing, the rear end keeps climbing, the nose is down and it just burrows into the clay. And in a sense, it's good that it broke loose, but it's bad because it bounces over this way and that truck does run wheel restraints. Don't think it does it, but right there, when you have a parts failure like that that just shears everything straight away, there's only so much you can do. You see the security team down there, by the fence getting the scare of a lifetime, but that's what that catch fence is for. It's built to stop a stock car, and it will stop a, uh, an 1,100 pound tire and wheel assembly. Remember, the planetary is in that thing when it's bouncing. That was a scary moment. We'll be back, stay with us. From right here in the state of Maryland, out of uh, the Bethesda area, Corey now. Out of Frederick, Maryland, along with Preston Perez. And uh, this team, strong, strong runs here tonight. In fact, he would have been in the final round race. 
Had he not missed a jump in the racing course, but he was on a tear in that pass. Now, wants to make up for the loss of freestyle. Let's see what he can do with all that big Chevrolet horsepower in the back of the court. Yes, it's Chevy powered. Kevin Stout for power plant in the back of this thing, 557 cubic inches. They seem to have finally found the, the secret to the suspension on this truck. It took them uh, really the better part of a year to find out where this truck liked to be. It was a kind of an experimental design when it came out. They're one of the first teams to really have it other than the metal shop. And it took a minute to get this truck, like I said, where it wanted to be. But now it does seem to be in its happy medium as Snyder lights up the dark spot on the track. This is when the Illuminator really shines here under the lights. First time ever at the Hagerstown Speedway and this team is definitely making good on the invitation. That's what he was looking for right there, putting all that horsepower into the gravel and it bit this time. He got that front slap perfectly. a little bit of flame right there. It looked like the motor leaned out for just a second. Keep an eye on that. But uh, right now he's on a good run. Keeping the speed up. Felt it out. He likes what he felt. Now he's going for it. Keeping that flow going move to move. He's going to come back down the front stretch. Good momentum on this run. Really a solid run. That's a nice hit right there for the Illuminator. Snyder has got to feel good with the way this truck is running here tonight. He will wrap it up right there. Search it a little bit at the end, but that was an awesome run for Snyder as we'll take another look at it. This slap that was just on the watch, trips it, let it come down, and when it rebounded, he grabbed a hold of the throttle and carried it out. Probably could have gone a little further had he known exactly where it was pointed, but it did move on him a little bit. Wisely let it come back down so he avoided getting it. You see there's a water tap down there on the infield with that barrier around it. They do not want to take out any of that plumbing, but that was a solid run for Corey Snyder in the Illuminator. Now as Mike Botter Sr. rolls out the safety clean black stallion, the do seem to have him repaired. Or not, immediately that right front lets go again. He cannot keep that thing under the truck. Last year it was Mikey Botters who had no look on this track at all. This year it is Mike Botter Sr. who is having no luck on this track. This has not been a good weekend for the Black Stallion crew. As you saw, completely ripped the front end up yesterday. They've repaired it, and now he has corners going away, although he's still able to move it under its own power. But we'll watch it again when he comes down. I do believe the knuckle is actually letting go right here. A lot of problems on the front end of that truck right now is We've got three more to go. Overkill Evolution. And uh, Mikey Botters the second. As I said, when we came back from break, we only had four to go. We did not expect to see Mike Botters Sr. back in the action after he pulled over there to the pits after best trick competition. But he wanted a shot at all the youngins out here. and. Uh, he got it, unfortunately, did not go his way, so they've got even more work to do on that trick. But Mikey, who had such a bad year here last year, as I said, has had a change in the luck as uh, he takes his shot at the big stuff on the infield. Nicely done. Overkill Evolution, you can see the, uh, the powder on the roof as 
he goes by, you can see the, the discoloration in the roof. That's literally the chemical they use to put the fire out for the best trick competition. He's running hard. He has been getting in slap bully territory this week. It's not something we've seen him do a ton of over the years. And uh, just goes to show he can make a truck do whatever he wants it to do. He's very, very competent, very spatially aware driver. And uh, very technically adept, but not afraid to put one over the edge. He's wanted trucks up to take victories. He loves turning the crowd on. Carrying ahead of steam there, and the biggest, longest jump so far off of that stack. He's giving him a run right now. It is uh, definitely technically right on par, if not a little more technically uh, ahead of Joe Foley, but I don't know that this is gonna be a takeover run as quiet as this truck runs, by the way. He almost makes it look too easy, but this is a solid freestyle from Mikey Botters. Gonna wrap it up there with a slide. Mikey Vodders in Overkill Evolution. Taking his shot, looking good here tonight. Again, really kind of surprising me with these slap bullies here this weekend. It's just not been his forte, or at least it's not been part of his repertoire for a while, but uh, he's re-including them and he's doing them with ease and some drivers will tell you those are actually harder to do than the stoppies in some ways because you got to do them all by feel you cannot see where your rear end is you have to know where it is and uh, not get on the throttle too early because you can blow the center section right out of one of these trucks if you do that now with the bright leds glowing here comes ryan fisherwood in the shaker well, he did that last night, I think maybe by accident. And then once he figured out he could do it now, he's figured out how he has to jump into that little race roller to pitch that front end up in the air. Ryan Disharoon ready to throw down, going after Foley, going after big time, by the way. As Joe Foley continues to kind of lead the charge here, remember, they're gonna give the crowd the final word on who gets this freestyle victory, but I can tell you Joe Foley, in the eyes of the officials, is sitting with the number one spot here in freestyle. They don't necessarily have to wait to get to that backstretch wall where the opening is to uh, get themselves into the infield. They can actually make a turn right up over the infield wall and drop right down into there as he takes a hit on the bus. Nicely done. Ryan Disharoon really working this track hard. <laughs> Driving it into a slap wheelie. It is going to be tough to outdo what Joe Foley did in his earlier run because he absolutely threw caution to the wind. These guys are driving hard, but it's not quite the same thing as what we saw Joe Foley do. Although Ryan Disharoon is closing in on it right now. I'm not taking anything away from anybody who's run, but this is what he's needed to do throughout as he knocks LT off the hood. And he's gonna wrap up the run right there. Ryan Disharoon looking awesome here in the shaker. Getting the job done. He might have closed in on Foley there. These guys knew who was going to be tough to beat in this freestyle lineup, and it's exactly who is leading the charge right now. I can tell you who's sitting on top of this thing at the moment. You got Foley, I keep mentioning, then you got Shane.
Shaker, Ryan Disharoon, Mikey Vodders, Preston Perez, Corey Snyder's up there with those guys, and here's a guy who wants to knock them all down. Jim Cole, Mr. Excitement in Avenger out of Columbus, Michigan, the Corey Rumble built machine. Very, very heavyweight truck, but it is built like a tank. It's built for punishment. He has a problem right there, though. He shuts down. Well, is this going to be the end of the weekend for Kohler? Something going away on the truck real, real soon into the beginning of the run. And uh, he does refire, so we'll see what he's got left. Jim Kohler and the Avenger will try to continue. We'll see if that comes back to haunt him. The loss of momentum can absolutely kill your chances of getting a freestyle victory. We see the lights are off, but uh, I don't know if he had an electrical problem there. Maybe just bounced something loose when he landed, or if uh, there's something actually going wrong in this machine right now as he works his way around the infield. Headed back toward the bus. This was his step up. Nicely done. Avenger with a massive hang time. Getting rocked around in the big green Chevrolet out of Cold Country. He's coming around. I'm a little worried there for a second. Something may have been going wrong with the truck. It looks like he's picking that momentum back up. And Kohler headed back out front. Remember when he was here last year, he had engine problems as well. Actually popped the motor on night number one. They got it fixed for night two, as did Mikey Potters. Spent all night repairing engines only to have that show rained out. Not the case this year, but they are putting a hurt on these trucks. Here at show number two. Big hang time for the Avenger as he works his way toward the ladder. Probably third of this run. We'll see what he's got left for this crowd as he heads back onto the infield. Is he headed for the step up again with more speed? Way up and over again, like a trampoline right on top of the bus. And Kohler will wrap up a solid run in Avenger, but I don't know that it's going to be enough to take over. However, the fans definitely got their money's worth here tonight. A carnage-filled weekend so far in Hagerstown, Maryland. Greg Whitaker will... Uh, Give us the call with the crowd. We will find out who indeed wins this freestyle. We head over to Greg right now. Say hello to the fans. What a night of action here in Hagerstown, Maryland. So once again, Mikey Vodders, two for two in racing, two for two in best trick. Hasn't been able to sweep and claim the freestyle victory. Last night it went to Preston Perez. Tonight it goes to Joe Foley. But Mikey Vodders has one more shot to try to sweep this whole thing. Tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be bringing you special highlighted coverage of the Sunday event next time right here at Backtown Productions. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next time from right here in Hagerstown.